Hey, this is Retired Geek Woman Adventures with Rhiannon with Ken Seed Retired Slow Play Part Number 12. And here we are, uh, let, right where we left off last time. I'm going to start checking the calendar every day to show you we are into second day of summer. And we are, uh, this task I've taken off my, my list more than once. It keeps coming back, that hampered quest. And I think they're working on a, a fix for that. And by the time you're watching this, they probably already have fixed it. And of course, the first thing we do every morning when we wake up, we want to give something in the brownie bowl. It doesn't matter what you put in that brownie bowl. So putting uh, just a dandelion in there is perfectly fine. What that does is that it, it basically pays um, the little guy over there, I forgot his name already, uh, to take care of everything, your property. If you do not put anything in that brownie bowl, if you go so many days, in the very first episode we learned about that, if you go too many days, uh, then really bad things start happening around the farm. And if you have a family, uh, your kids don't get taken care of and it's really a bad situation. So it's a good idea to get in a habit of putting something in that brownie bowl every single day. And I've seen carrot players that play, uh, you know, they never go to sleep. They, they miss going to home often. And I have found that if I can get home at any time, even if it's four o'clock in the morning and sleep for one hour or five o'clock in the morning and sleep for one hour, then I can make sure that I have, uh, um, just double checking my, uh, yeah, fish spawn rate. I was double checking my boons to make sure of what I had because sometimes I forget from day to day. Um, so if you, anyway, point I was making is just don't miss your brownie bowl. And I, I don't because I try to get home and, and um, sleep at least for an hour or so. And that helps me remember. I get up the next day, oh, journeyman fishing. Wow, I'm excited about that. Um, so anyway, I, I fish every time I see these fish along here, and uh, it doesn't matter day that I, the time of day that I come by here. I love to come by here and try to get those little guys to, and see he didn't like the ripple. Some fish don't like the ripples, some do, and I have figured out sometimes it seems the same fish does, the same type of fish does, and then when I do it again, they run away from me. So I don't know. I don't understand that. There are a lot of things that I don't understand in the game. I think there's a lot of things that other people don't understand in the game because it is kind of a new game. It hasn't been out forever. Um, I do know that there's a lot of people that play this game uh, from Discord. I'm learning a lot from them. 88 uh, profit from yesterday. We've still got our potions there and it's before opening hours so we could make some if we wanted to. Traveling Merchant is there and the task board. And we want to check that task board. I'm pretty sure I have a fun flower and I know I have pears, tons of them. So we're going to get those two quests. What that does, if you haven't seen this game before, this is the first time watching one of my videos, is you doing quests for people helps you with friendship points and your overall reputation. And it looks like Teresa Brown doesn't mind strawberries, so good thing there. Teresa Brown is one of our employees, and we're trying to get those hearts all the way up to the far right, so that um, she like that we have a, that we're best friends. It's my understanding that it helps your employee have a much better attitude. So um, when I pick up a couple tasks like this, I generally it's like okay, and if they're nearby, not too far away, we're gonna go ahead and do them really quickly. And we're going to go see Lucy Arrows. And, oh, there's Arthur. What does Arthur want? He's kind of an interesting character. And let's see. Uh, he wants to beg for big forgiveness from somebody. And he wants a grave lilac. And I thought I had some grave lilac. Um, I wasn't sure. I, I wasn't sure if I ran out or not. And what does Herbert want? <laughs> we're not very good friends with him. And he needs something, too. Oh, look at these funny things that he says that he wants. And he tells you, oh, face eating, oh, inkly, dinkly poo. He wants a charm weed. <laughs> oh my gosh, after saying he collected all those things. Yeah, sure. Do we have one? No, we don't have one on us. We've got probably got some in the shop, but um, those are one of those things that I really need to go and collect a lot of. Uh, because um, it, it, it's something that is used in a lot of potions. I know it has charm attribute, and um, I'm not even sure if you can buy it. I don't. It seems like to me you can't order it. So anyway, 
uh, we need to go more places to collect that charm weed. We need to adventure in more areas and we'll get there. And all of a sudden, fish. Same thing as squirrel. I love fishing in this game. Oh my gosh, do I love fishing in this game. It is so much fun. Um, and I've mentioned this in previous episodes. I'll probably mention it again. It is just, to me, it is one of the funnest things to do. And I hate fishing in every other game I've ever played. So, I don't know. It, I'd be curious about your take on that. Do you hate fishing in other games? And do you like it in this one? Do you hate fishing in this game? And you like it in other ones? I'm really curious if I'm unique. Oh, that helped friendship level a lot with Lucy. Wow. Uh, friction points and reputation. So that was cool. Saw a couple of books here that I haven't looked at. Uh, talk about the wandering folk. This is interesting. They all look alike and you really can't remember much about them. The Fae are obviously coming into our village and absorbing our culture. Okay. So what this book is telling us is that, I mean, because there's people that wander around our town all the time and they look exactly alike. They're dressed exactly alike. They have the same faces. And what this book just told us is that they are the Fae. So interesting. Okay. Uh, inter very interesting. The Fae walk among us at will. And while they do no harm, you can't help but feel suffocated by their presence. As for the brownies, their mischief is more obvious to see. You can hear the giggling and see the tidy houses or rotten apples, but we take it as part of life. And if I, and if, I forgot, I didn't see that all the way. Sorry. I'm trying to get better about reading the books. And if I see one that is pertinent to something that we need to know, like right away. So again, I, I'm going to slow down and read some of these, some of these, not so much. They're not as important, but these books do stay in your inventory. Uh, this is Lucy How Lucy. Lucy's Arrow's house and it says that we have permissions. That means if there's anything here we could harvest, we could take it. Now I'm looking here and I see absolutely nothing that we could pick up at Lucy Arrow's house. So okay, whatever. We'll go ahead and continue continue on our journey with our other tasks that we have. And we'll set that that away. If you haven't seen an episode, you've never played before, that is an invaluable tool to help you go and to find the place you're looking for. And if you look at it, it's the word is that or way, and it's kind of a tongue in cheek for that away, which I think is so funny. There is so much funny uh, dialogue and books and just, oh my gosh, so much funny stuff that makes me laugh pretty much every single time that I play. Pretty much every single time because I, it's a something new and it's tongue in cheek and they use references to things that we would know about. For instance, I saw something that was specifically relating to the Beatles yesterday. It's like, are you kidding me? It's just too daggone funny in my view. Um, so we're going to give Boots a, some blueberries. He likes, oh, look at that. 38 friendship points to give him a blueberry. So that is awesome. And he says, that'll do nicely. Uh, Tom Hook Fingers. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting dude that we will probably stumble across at some point. And there's a lot of talk about Tom uh, on the Discord channel. Down in my description of my videos, I have a few links for you that can be helpful. And one of them is the official Discord channel. And you can go there and uh, talk to uh, all the wonderful folks there that are more than willing to help with anything large small dumb questions, whatever They're very very helpful, and I appreciate them so much They have helped me understand a lot of this game uh, As you see there, there's a person standing at the counter who has an orange star above his head While he is being waited on by my employee. I cannot talk to him However, he is someone we have not met yet because of the orange star. That's how we know so when he moved away, now I can introduce myself to him. And who knows where he lives? He lives somewhere else. Um, so we're going to go ahead and meet him. I'm pretty sure we've met everybody in this particular part of the town, but I'm not 100% sure. So we're going to try to make sure that we meet everyone that we can. That way they show up and we can find out our relationships with them. Getting good or better relationships with people does all kinds of things. Uh, they send you gifts and your reputation goes up. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're trying to 
win or a certain part of this game you want to complete things being friends with everybody helps plus when you are best friends with everybody of a particular house two things happen you can harvest things from their property is one thing that can happen you can also a lot of places a lot of houses have a locked chest sometimes it's right in their house and sometimes it's located somewhere else um, and nearby and if you are good enough friends with them, eventually they will give you the code to that chest. And in that chest is all kinds of things. You can get uh, gifts like uh, I saw one that was amazing. It was uh, like 10 five star rainbow mushrooms. And I thought, well, wow, how long would it have taken us to have gotten five star rainbow mushrooms? Uh, other times you get recipes which are invaluable. Uh, you get some proverbs that are hard to get or the only way to get is to get that chest. So it's it's important. It's part of the game. But at the same time, you know, I, I'm not a power gamer. I'm going to take my time and I'll get there eventually. So, you know, if you're a power gamer and you're looking for tips for how to power game, this is not the uh, gameplay for you. And I realized I had not uh, clicked on this statue yet. So I wanted to make sure that I did that uh, so I can come back here quickly. Uh, as I started to say, there are power, many power gamers out there. There's many uh, streams, video, live streams and videos that you can um, watch to learn how to power game. I don't do it. It's not my thing at all. Uh, I like to enjoy the game and a game like this that is so incredibly detailed with small details that so easy to miss if you're rushing along then that's what then I'm the person for you and I really appreciate it if you would watch my videos all the way to the end oh another map stone listen to that isn't that an awesome sound I've got the volume turned down quite a bit um, so that it doesn't override my talking um, but it's said to me it's very satisfying to hit those map stones and and they if you have their volume turned up uh, or a headset on it makes a very loud booming noise it's like yes i love it so i need i had gotten completely lost there and i wanted to save you all the frustration of me being completely lost um i wasted a bunch of time so I decided that in some cases like that, I am going to go ahead and cut my videos a little bit. That's why one reason why I edit them. It's another reason why I don't do live streams. I don't want to do stuff like that and embarrass the crowd out of myself. Um, so occasionally I will skip something and I'll tell you when I do it. And right there, it was very obvious that I had just skipped something. But really, only thing that happened is I had gotten lost where I was at and wasted a bunch of time. So anyway we're back to it we're actually on the farm and we are fishing around here aside from the fact that i enjoy fishing um i just i need to get a whole lot of fish you can one thing you can do with them is sell them in the general stores so that's a great little way to make uh, some pocket change and eventually uh oh look at that apothecary gained another perk point that is fantastic um eventually i want to be able to purchase a general store and I'm, and as we saw um, from the, there was a guy from Tirnanog that sent us a little book and it talked about specialization. You can specialize your store. So there's different uh, advantages and disadvantages to specializing your store. And I'm giving a thought to having a fish market. It mentioned that in the book. So it's like, well, um, that's a good maybe because I like to fish so much. We you know that might be a really good thing to do with all my fish is uh, pot. That was his name. I started to say his name earlier and it wouldn't come back to me. So if you haven't ever watched any of my videos, videos before, um, I am a retired senior. I do have some short term memory loss. It's not unusual for seniors to have it and I seem to have it in spades. And so occasionally I will repeat things that I've already told you in the same episode and sometimes um, I do that on purpose because I want to make a point or I want to make sure you don't miss the point and so if I do I'll let you figure out which is which and I'm so sorry if it annoys you. <laughs> so here we are we are in the north gate right now and you can see we're having a beautiful rainy day oh I love the beautiful rainy days. So we're going to head up north. We're in Rivermore Hub. This is where in place, one place we can get charmweed. 
And I knew that, so I thought we'd come up here and try to find some. You never know what else you're going to find. Oh, there's some right there. Charmweed, right there. So we need a lot of charm weed. So that, well, while I'm here, I probably ought to grab a bunch of charm weed, um, as much as I can see, and fish. Oh, look at that, right on the head. I love it when you hit them on, ooh, firefish. It's my understanding you can get firefish on really super windy days. And so that's an, you know, it's an unusual, it's not as common of a fish as the pond lurkers and the weed skimmers. So um, I was very excited when I saw that. Uh, that I had got it, and it's like, yes, and I believe you can get them on windy days. So, again, you learn things like that through Proverbs uh, books, but mostly Proverbs, and what you would do is you can look at the Proverbs, it's in your inventory, for lack of a better word, um, and look at all the Proverbs and search for firefish, and it would tell you that you can catch them on a windy day. And if there's any other stipulations, it would tell you what they are. So, uh, I was very happy to see that. And it's like, okay, what else we got going on over here? And I'm just kind of looking around, hoping I can get some more charm weed. The more, the better. And we did already check that got a statue because it has white, like eyes and the nose or whatever is supposed to be there. Uh, that means that we have already clicked on it. If it was all dark, like the one we saw in the previous area, that means that we hadn't clicked on it yet. So you want to click on it so that if you want to fast travel there, you have the ability to do that. So that just helps you get around a little bit faster. So this game seems to have a combination of fast travel or you can walk yourself all the way across the map if you're so inclined. In other games, I will not fast travel because it's immersion breaking, but for some reason in this game, it doesn't feel like that. So like when I click on the statue and it does the swirlies, I don't know, I, I so many games it just goes to black. And I know this does this when you transition between the maps, but um, I don't know. It doesn't bother me for some reason in this game. I don't know why. It's kind of a weird, a weird thing. It just feels, it feels okay to me. Uh, so again, we're just checking around here, looking for people we haven't seen before, uh, clicking on the heads, the home stones. Each house has a home stone, and when you click on it, it tells you who lives in the house, and it also shows your reputation in the house, and it shows you if you are able to, um, uh, borrow all the stuff that you can harvest the stuff that's on their farm so um, it's like a friendly thing it's like sure take whatever you want you know somebody comes over and they're saying uh, do you got anything to eat sure come on in get anything. it's kind of that kind of thing you become friends you can come on in and take anything you want so you can see that a number of these maps that we haven't discovered all the map stones yet so we have a lot of work to do as time goes on you see we know one person that lives in this particular house and I wanted to run in here. I saw a couple of books. And again, these books will be in your inventory. So if you're looking for something and you're trying to find out about something, uh, the books can be absolutely invaluable to be able to help you. And I thought, I can get that fish. So that's what I was doing, pulling my fish, you know, right back up. Sometimes I'll just sit in there and feel, oh, another map stone. Yes, mapped region. Look at that. And I want to do a disclaimer um, that we have new kittens living in our house. They are very, very active at times and very, very sleepy at times. And right now I have a little guy who, we have a bed that's really high. The mattress is really high off the ground because it has a high frame and it has a high, um, uh, the mattresses and the box springs are really, really, th the really tall one. So it's very, very high up. Well, this little guy, he can get up there uh, okay. He's figured out how to get up there. Getting down is a challenge. And what he's figured out is he can jump down the, jump from the bed to my chair. Because then my, my office is in the bedroom. So he can get from the bed to my chair. Uh, and he ends up on the back of it. And he's not the most um, coordinated little fellow. And he makes horrendous noises as his nails are trying to grab hold so he doesn't fall. So... If you hear any of that, I'm sorry. I try to cut as much of that out as I humanly possibly can, um, but uh, it's gonna happen sometimes. I'm uh, running around meeting all these people just because um, I want to eventually get to know them all, but for now, um, I just wanna say hi to anybody that has an orange star over their head. That way they're on my list of people and I can see where they live uh, for, by looking at the map and so there's lots of good reasons to meet all the people and here's a very important fellow 
His name is Kane Hines. Are you a lover of dogs? I love dogs. I write books too. Perhaps you've read them. They are very useful. I think there's a number of books about dogs that I've seen. So let's give him a gift real quick. Yeah, it's okay. He wasn't he wasn't jumping up and down, but he wasn't hating it either. So not bad. And a music festival in autumn. Okay, cool. And then we're going to click on him again and click on buy. Now, if you will see, he has dogs for sale for 50 brass. The one that is in the general store up in uh, the, for the original town is 100. And so I wanted to get a dog as soon as I can. I can't afford to buy the general store and steal the dog that's in there whose name is Sausage. So instead, I can just now bought a little dog and I named him Digger. And there's reasons that I call him Digger. So we've got this cute little dog. And uh, so that's our first dog. So now we have a, a uh, pig and a dog currently is the animals that we currently have. So I really, that's another reason I wanted to come to this town is I knew that that guy was there and he's the dog person and you can buy dogs from him anytime. Now, keep in mind that your animals age just like people do. And eventually I might lose Little Digger and want another dog. So uh, this is the guy that you can buy it from. And I've also read that eventually uh, he passes on. People have a lifespan in this game and he passes on and eventually someone else moves into his house and takes over the selling of the dogs. So uh, very interesting. I can't wait to get that far in the game where, uh, you know, the, the town is changing out. People have life expectancies. Um, as you can tell, I'm going to tell uh, Digger to go on home and um, because I don't want him with me right now. I'm not ready to have him with me right now, but it's so much fun. Uh, when I have what I need to have him around. You can see that his mood is not good. They said if his mood is in the red, he's not useful at all. Uh, he says he likes um, chicken. Like, okay, we'll give him some chicken and see how that helps things. It f almost filled him up and it changed his mood drastically. So if you're going to use your dog for what we're going to find out that we can use our dog for, it's important to keep him fed and happy. So I'm gonna go ahead and send him home and off he goes to however he needs to go home. <laughs> I don't know why he's got going this way, but we're not going to follow him to see how he gets home. Uh, that fest field. Okay, we got lots of places that we have not opened the map up. And I am going to get to that. Oh, look at this. And we found another one. So cool. And we found a proverb about moonfish. So awesome. If you haven't seen an episode before, I've mentioned this before because I think it's an, uh, just an astronomical stat. I have been told by people that did early access that they were told that there are over 900 proverbs in this game. Yes, you heard what I said. 900 proverbs. That is an astronomical amount of <laughs> these little things that we have to go around and find. So I was like totally shocked. I, I, I can't imagine anybody would find them all or if they really know how many they are for sure. But that's what I heard. So it's like, wow, that's a lot. Uh, but they're cool. I, it's it's like if you are taking this game like I am, meaning a nice, relaxed, retired, slow play, then it that's okay. It gives you something to shoot for. I don't need to do that in my particular lifespan. Um, in this game, what you end up doing is you take over the body of your heir. And I just, I think that's kind of interesting. I can't wait until I get to that point in the game. But that's what it says. You're, you become your heir. So you live on in your uh, family, in your children, which I think is very interesting. I mean, in real life, we kind of do live on in our children. They, they take up the mantle and, and go on and whatever. I find that to be an interesting game mechanic. I am not sure I have ever played a game that had that game mechanic before. So I don't know. I just find it to be interesting. I, I'm, I'm curious how that will all work. It happens when you are 50 years in the game, and um, obviously I think I'm 18, so it's going to be a while unless I go to Fairweather and uh, have him age, you know, t get some things from Fairweather, is what I'm trying to say. If you trade your years of life for um, his goodies and special little things that he has. So 
so far I haven't looked into what he has that I might want to trade my years of life for. I'm much more interested right now um, in uh, getting my businesses started and hopefully getting a family started. Those are the things that I'm interested in right now. And then later on, I will look at the things he has and see if they are worth years of my life. And I know some people, I mean, they have a tremendous amount of years of life taken away uh, right away. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm not sure that I want to do that. There's so much you miss. Uh, I didn't like that five-year skip. Things happened. Um, it was really interesting. The Brown family had a new child born and, and my uncle died. It's like, what? Uh, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of, I don't know. There's lots of things that happen during your skips and I don't like it. It seems like that your business kind of goes on a, on a pause more or less. Nothing seems to happen as far as I can tell. Uh, I don't know. I don't know much about it. I haven't, um, I haven't looked into it. I've seen a few people do it on their uh, playthroughs and uh, some of it's like quite shocking. Some people just trade in a ton of years and I'm just not interested in doing that. I want to live this life out and we'll see how it goes. If I decide to run over and check with Fairweather, uh, see what he's got after I have children, after they are up, up and going and doing their thing, then yeah, maybe. A big maybe. Or a small maybe. I'm not sure which way to put it. So, Okay, so it is 9 p.m. And I'm going to... Oh, a bog bean. That's the first time we've got one of those. We're going to check and see how we did. We had 9 profit because we had ordered a bunch of stuff. But, on the other hand, our profit is doing quite well. Our employees still are not happy. Uh, we do have one perk or two perk points. I'm kind of waiting for three, I think. I'm not sure. Um, I think I'm going to kind of hang out and wait on that. And um, since the shop is closed, I do want to check. I'm checking my stock and things that are on the shelves. We have quite a few things on the shelves. At the same time, it's like, let's go ahead and uh, double check our inventory. See what I can put in in our inventory from my stash that I have. So I, I actually am not using the right terminology. I'm putting things in the material cabinet from my own personal inventory. So that's a good thing to do because if I'm walking around and I'm gathering things, it's free. It's free. I find it along the ground. It's free. So if I can do that and use that to make a potion, that's 100% profit. So it is wise if you want to make money to do that as much as you can and keep those uh, shelves stocked up as much as possible. And another thing you can do, and I talked about this when I first bought the apothecary, is you could keep it closed for a while and just continue to stock it. Again, these are tips that I have gathered from the Discord channel. Um, on my, my listing that I have, uh, my video listings down in the description, I do have a number of links that can be helpful. One is the official Kinseed webpage, which is really useful for uh, if there's new updates or all kinds of information, it's kind of a, a general web page to talk about their game. The other one is a wiki I found, which is a fandom wiki. And last time I checked it, it was up and people were starting to add to it. I'll have to keep an eye on that to make sure that that is still uh, doing what it should. And then I have an ingredient spreadsheet. I've talked about this before. And this is a, a sheet that someone has created which lets you uh, use ingredients that you, you don't know by looking on your screen what they actually are. So, for instance, charmweed. Um, I kind of guessed that that had a charm attribute. That spreadsheet, however, tells what all ingredients attributes are. So you can use ingredients that you don't know what they are to create the proper potions. Um, and then, the finally, I have the Discord channel listed there. That is the official Discord channel, so that you can go in there and chat with other people who are obsessed with this amazing little game. Plus, they are more than willing to help with any questions that you might have. So, um, I, I think there's a number of things that can help you there. So, check out the uh, in the description down below this video for all of that information. So as we are continuing on here, it's really getting dark. As you can see, or maybe you can't see, I can't see. It is so dark right here. It's like, I mean, it's bad. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I don't like it that I have to play at night sometimes because I really can't see very well. 
but there's some there's certain fish and certain flowers and certain things that you have to do where you absolutely must do it at night so it just is what it is I, I don't like it but it is what it is so I just have to do my best with trying to see it's 4 a.m. and you can see that you can see a little bit better um, what the heck here it's going backwards forwards backwards forwards okay I was trying to find Herbert Lemon because I believe it was a charm weed that he wanted and now I have a charm weed so that he can get what he needs and he'll be more friends with us it's kind of interesting in the very beginning um, uh, our uncle told us if we had gone, if we were leaving the farm this direction, to be careful that this guy was a grump, and he really is, to start off with. Uh, all of the characters really uh, are, are not super friendly. Some of them are way less friendly. And there he's talking about that Tom guy again. Yeah, that's not cool. I don't want to talk about that guy. I don't know anything about him. He's creepy. So let's see. It's 5 a.m., and as I said before, a lot of times... It, that I'll try if I'm out staying out all night long and I, you can do this you cannot go to bed at all if you never want to because this game automatically saves at 6 a.m. if whether or not you are home and in bed um, it just it just does so uh, another thing it can do though let's say you've been you you're getting ready to go into a, 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 a woods to go fight you can come to your house sleep in your bed and you will automatically save the game. So that kind of helps if you're going to go fighting and you don't want to have to redo things. Should you happen to die, you can basically reload your day um, or from that save spot. So uh, very handy uh, thing to use. So let's go ahead and feed the brownie bowl. Um, where is it? There it is. Dandelions. Uh, used to be you could feed dandelions to your pigs, but apparently they changed that and I hated that because it was an awesome thing I could do easy way to get uh, Fertilizer was to give them a dandelion, but they changed that they, they said that it wasn't food. Well, it is too. So It can be food if it's eaten, right? <laughs> well three-star gassy apple. All right So let's see what we got going on today there's that swipe I told you about where it goes black and I guess it's the best it's about the best way of doing it it doesn't mess up my immersion too much um, it's like going through a door I guess uh, I don't know I don't know it doesn't bother me too much like some of the transitional things do so it's you know it's okay and uh, walking across here and look at there there's some fish so we're gonna see what we can get it's 8 a.m. and I know you can catch different fish at different times of the day so we are going to go check it out and see what we can find. And it is a pike. So again, I'm collecting those fish because I really think that um, eventually when money is sufficient, we are going to purchase a general store. And we're going to see what Jeremy wants. What do you want? A bunch of items. No, I'm not going to do a bunch of items. Maybe later in the game I'll do some of that, but really, honestly, I don't like those quests. So I will decline them every chance I get. Uh, this little, oh, a grave lilac. It's outside the apothecary. Uh, we made nine yesterday profit. That's better than zero. We ordered a bunch of stuff. Our employees are still mad. Don't know why. Uh, that little tree out there was one of the perks that I had taken, which it puts a, a um, an ingredient out there and I like that because it takes me a while to learn the ins and outs of the game and figure out where all these things are so it gives me uh, ingredients I know where the grave lilacs are but I don't get very many of them because I forget to go at the right time and let's talk see how Teresa's is doing we're gonna give her a gift what does she like we don't know yet so we'll just try a couple things here and see what she likes eh, she's okay with the strawberries uh, not a whole lot of excitement there and cheers and a secret Teresa Green doesn't like rainbow mushrooms. Well, that's good because I don't have very many of them and I wouldn't want to give them out anyway. So, uh, so Teresa Green gets no mushrooms. <laughs> what happened, what that does is when I pull up Teresa Green, I can see uh, her likes and dislikes and it will say that she doesn't like rainbow mushrooms. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm sorry, little chicken. I was When you walk by these chickens, uh, they generally will throw eggs at you, which I think is cute and adorable. And... Uh, so I was like, okay, what do we got? We have uh, Arthur Brown wants a grave lilac. And I think one thing that I can do, oh, Arthur Brown, I said, I said the wrong name. 
Yeah, I got one right there. I just picked it off my tree. How about that? And, uh, oh my gosh, he's telling us about a dream, some sort of cave, and all the animals. He's so weird, and it's funny. Yeah, I went to bed hungry and woke up full. It's like, wow, so freaky. <laughs> His dialogue is hilarious. You really should pay very close attention to some of this dialogue. It's just too much, too much funny. Uh, Arthur Brown also wants a little sap, which we don't have any of yet. And uh, our money's doing pretty good. There's someone who wants a strange flower. And another strange flower I've never seen. We've I got those kind of flowers, but what is this? Uh, uh, well, that's a flower we have apparently uh, have never been to that location before and never have heard of that flower before. So it, sometimes things are located in really weird places. So. I think I've mentioned this in previous episodes. Your inventory, sometimes it's not always logical. Um, so I, you know, again, uh, you kind of have to look through and to find things. Are they herbs? Are they flowers? Why is wheat there? I, I don't know the answer to the question. I'm sure there's logic. It doesn't make sense to me, uh, but it might make sense to other people. So let's see where we are at. I'm looking at my equipment and I don't have a shovel and there's one for sale here if I can get to the right place. There we go. Shovel. Purchased a 10 shovel. That was important uh, that we were able to do that. Very important because uh, with a shovel and a dog you can have some major success. <laughs> so everybody's saying, how do you? I love the villagers when you start, especially when you start making friends, they start being really nice to you. They're super nice. Uh, so we've got a shovel now, and um, we've got our digger. He's got a pretty good mood. So I think that uh, we can, so I just called, I summoned him. So you can summon your animals from anywhere. So I summoned him, and he says, woof, 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 woof. If he says woof, woof, then you go over to wherever he is. he stands and makes a little circle on the ground. So you use your shovel and you can get stuff. I got a lover's truffle, which apparently is very hard to get. So my dog told me to go get it. And I come in here all the time by mistake and turn right around and come back out. I don't like going at the mines at all. I wanted to go north and I hit the wrong pathway. So you can get things that would be really hard to get otherwise using your dog. And again, you want to keep them in a good mood. He said, woof woof and he says woof woof he goes to a spot and then he makes this tiny little round spot that it's hard to see and it's a hob tooth that is so cool and he did another one and it's a wheat seed so having a dog with you i mean it does take you long it's kind of like uh when the, the weeds and i have that boon where you can get seeds from the weeds it's kind of the same thing it takes longer to go anywhere because he's constantly finding things um, if he says bark, bark, I believe that's supposed to mean there's an iron charm. It's supposed to mean if he says bark, bark, that there's a proverb in the area, I think. Oh, there he goes again. <laughs> it's like, okay. And we pick up a copper jewelry. So these are things we can use or and or sell. So it's very profitable and we will be able to, what's happening to Herbert? Uh, we will be able to make up the price um, that 50 gold or brass that we spent very quickly by selling these items that we don't need. So the jewelry and um, extra charms and things that we don't need can be sold. And so we are just going to march right on along. We can get some charm weed if there's any available um, and just let little Digger do his job. And, uh, and he's so cute. He's, it, it said it wasn't a puppy. He was, I don't remember how old he said he was. But he looked like a puppy, which is kind of why I selected him. I guess he's just a little dog. And I hate this fog. Hate it with a passion. I can't hardly see the screen anyway. At nighttime, forget about it. I will just get home as fast as possible if I'm seeing this. It's a pain in the neck. And it's even in this part of the homesteads, which I haven't found all of the map stones. And with all this fog, I can't really see them anyway. Sometimes it's even worse than it is. I just hate it. Um, and I've heard other people say that, that they hate it, that they can't see um, very well at all when it's very foggy. It looks like it's kind of fading now, which is good because uh, I just get annoyed. It's like, oh, that, you know, it makes it so much harder. 
Um, I know I was playing a, an online game one time where on the overland map they had fog. I'm thinking, why? Uh, it made no sense to me. I couldn't see where I was trying to go and it was annoyed me. So maybe it annoys me extra amount. <laughs> um, it annoys me an extra amount because of the uh, uh, game that I played where it's like it's, it made no sense to have fog on the overland map and where you couldn't see things. So obviously this is a public tree area and we've got all kinds of fruit that we're able to get. And Digger found us something else. So what'd you find, Digger? Um, don't know. Not sure if I got it. There it is. It is 10 jewelry. And so again, that's things that we can sell. One thing you want to be very careful of is that you can hit your animals and other people accidentally with your slingshot. I have done that before and they are not happy. Um, one time, um, I kept hitting one guy and he said, stop doing that. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know I was hitting you at all. So it was kind of funny. Um, uh, so anyway, be careful about hitting your dog. I imagine your animal, it would hurt. It would take down something, probably the mood most likely. Um, so we don't want to hurt, uh, Digger's mood because we want Digger to be happy and show us all kinds of cool stuff that we can dig up from the ground. So that's why I bought the tin shovel today is to show you this. This is lover wood, and this is an important area too. This is where we have to go on a certain day of the year to get a certain item if we have someone that we want to marry. So uh, again, there you can also get the Rose of Romance. That's my first one there. Uh, those are for dating people. Uh, there was a bone and it, it said dog lollipop. You have to be careful with the bones if you're trying to get them because your dogs will grab them really quick from you if they're close enough. Um, so Rose of Romance is for going on a date, which you can do. You don't have to go on a date to uh, marry a spouse. You know, it's not important. Again, I just clicked on that so I could make sure that I had clicked on that statue, which I had not done. Another map stone. Oh, I just love that sound. Oh my gosh. And let's see who all's around here. But this is an important area. Uh, when it comes to marrying, um, getting married. And I do want to be married in the game. I want to have a family in the game. And so it's important to me. It's part of the role-playing part of it. And so I will be doing that. And discovered homestone. That's somebody, it showed somebody that lived there. And a proverb, a firefish proverb. So cool. We were just running around doing all kinds of things. In the meantime, Digger found us some more copper jewelry. Now, you see that chest over there? That's directly related to the guy that lives in that house right there. If we become best friends with them, we'll be able to go over to that chest and we'll be able to uh, open it up and see what is inside. So those are cool. I don't know how many there are exactly, um, but I know that people get very excited about trying to get them all. Oh, a vial of slime. Awesome. That can be used for uh, making potions. Found a proverb. Holy tamole. And there's another map stone. All right. We're just doing all kinds of stuff here. I mean, digger. What do we got going on here? And again, I wish they wouldn't woof at all when they're not. Do it's now he woof woof. It's like, okay, I got to go back. What do you find? What do you find? <laughs> Supposedly, there are some areas that are very specific. Oh, a 10 charm. Cool. Um, that you can go to and um, you'll get something every single time you go past there. And here's a book. And on the other side, there's some more books. So we're going to go grab these two. There's two books right here by this guy. Planning your wedding for, wedding for village idiots. The other book is The Ritual of Marriage. And so The Ritual of Marriage would be one you read first. And the other one is uh, Planning Your Wedding. So this, it's a whole thing. It's not just uh, I want to marry you and you get married. It is a ritual. A, a big ritual. So we're going to go through that as soon as we uh, can get ourselves engaged to the person that we choose. I'm probably going to be going uh, with Ash Brown. And the reason is kind of like the the game. I'm a senior. I should back up. I'm a senior. And yes, I know that I'm playing a child that's 18 years old. But in selecting a spouse, I want a male and I want someone that is roughly in my age bracket. Now, in this game, it has been said, and I think it's true, there are not very many male characters that are close to this 18-year-old person's age. So that kind of annoys me 
but it does kind of push you to go with Ash if you don't want to marry somebody who is way older than you, which I know a lot of people don't care. They, they marry very old people. It's like, okay, whatever. I'm not like that. I want, it doesn't make sense to me in my role-playing brain. So sorry if that's the case, but in the, irregardless, it'll be Ash Brown and the game kind of pushes you towards it. He's like the super easy person to, um, be able to complete their story in previous episodes. I've talked about that so you can complete the story. Um, and, and, and he's one of the first ones that you can do that with. What I'm doing right now is my reputation bar was full and it was flashing. If you see it, it says neophyte and it's flashing, it's, it's blue. Um, I'm trying to get as close as I can to the, um, circle. You can't go directly there, but I can go to the shingles and then walk over from there to the circle and go see the grandmasters. So the grandmasters have summoned us because we have filled our reputation bar and they're so happy. And now we are going to go see them. So that you get summoned when your bar is flashing and says here, you can see it's flashing from blue and white and saying, hey, you got a level up. So I do not know if you don't level up, if you would be leveling up twice if you ignored it for a long time. I don't know the answer to that question. So not sure because I usually get there pretty quick after I get the summons to go. Um, they are right up here next to that monolith thing and in we go. Let's go see what they got to say about our reputation. Hopefully they're happy with us. We're trying. Another step forward it is encouraging to see. Another gift for you then. The torque of returning. Rub it and you will magically transport it to the entrance of this very chamber. It's made to last. So we receive the torque of return. That should save your shoe leather. So what it is, is when you want to come back here, you don't have to um, f try to figure out how to get there, go to the shingles or whatever. You can use that thing in your inventory, like put it in your inventory slot, I believe. I haven't used it, so I don't know, but I've seen it done. And then it will take you right back to the entrance of where the Grandmasters are. So that's cool. And now we're working on our next level, which is novice level. Again, I'm in no hurry. And supposedly, um, if I should pass away, uh, what, what did you find, doggy? There you are. Uh, if I should pass away, it's my understanding that your children would kind of take over that uh, level. And I'm pretty sure because it, that's what it says when it's talking about your legacy and that um, your children would become stronger. I believe what that's what the, all that means. I haven't seen any streams or, or playthroughs of people that have done it yet, um, but that's okay. I kind of would like to experience it myself. And so we're headed back. Uh, I was trying to get, how do I get? Back. It's 9 p.m. Uh, so I was looking for the goddess statue nearest to our home. And uh, the one, there's, I think there's a couple. But that's okay. We're going to head for home. Me and Digger have had a very busy day. And he's still at it. Little guy. Look at him go. Whew. And I got zinc jewelry. Holy moly. We wouldn't have been able to get that for a really long time. And so these are things that I don't, probably won't use so I can sell them. And that's kind of what I plan to do. Due to the time of day and the shop being closed, I'm going to run by my um, shop and see how we did, check our monies. I kind of watched this really closely, especially here in the beginning, um, just to make sure that things are stocked up, my employees are trying to get happier. I also wanted to run by the blacksmith shop because you can sell things in their little area in the back up here. You can click on it and it says items to sell. So these charms and things I can sell. The shop has a hundred um, uh, brass available. So it's like, yeah, so that was cool. So just, I'm not gonna be using them, so sell them. I, have, I don't know if they have any use at all, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and sell them. And I'm gonna hang on to the ore just in case whatever, if somebody requires me to make something or whatever. Uh, I will sell the extra, um, wards the extra charms i'll keep one of each thing because i don't know yet what i'm going to use or what i'll need but that puts extra money in our pocket look at that we're over 500 now 
we're getting very close to being able to purchase the general store but I don't want to purchase it too soon that's easy to do because you get excited right yesterday or today I made 139 profit on my store so is that awesome or what everybody's still mad don't know why you're still mad uh, I don't know if it's friendship level and look at that look at that I've only got two uh, channel eights or Chanel eight or whatever they call it so everything else sold today and that is fantastic so I was very excited about that I've got items coming um, some things you're going to use an awful lot of and so you want to keep them in stock as much as possible uh, but uh, and I can't you know if I remember to to uh, like the catnip if I remember to grab that then that's a very useful item to have so I'm gonna keep most of that if not all of those things that I have in my inventory so I'd like to keep one in my own inventory in case someone asks for one uh, if I don't need it to have it in my materials cabinet I'll go ahead and hang on to it but if I do then I'll put it on there so you know uh, the uh, Lutra, I'm saying all that wrong, I know, is a useful, very useful ingredient. So uh, Primrose is, again, a very useful ingredient. I think I have 13 of them, though. So I'm just kind of going over what do I have, what can I put in there, and then what can I make um, really quickly before it's you know time to go home and everything. So that's kind of what I was thinking in my head. So you just run to any of these stations, and it doesn't matter which one you walk up to. Uh, you can create anything from any station. So um, I know that Poppy has Illusion, and I know that that has Scent, and Time has Scent, and so we're going to pop it in here. Uh, I think you've seen this before. Put it in there, pull the handle down, dump it in your pot, and green is, I know it's going to freeze, so we're going to turn that up and see if I can not put too much red in it this time. Perfect. Love it. That worked out really well. Here's Poppy. It's red, so we're going to have to counter it with green. Dump it in there. Spin that wheel to find the green. You can see it's cooking really high, though, so we're going to turn it down just a little bit and get that turned down. There we go. And there we are. A potion. Poppy perk up. Ready to go. Cures apathy, but it gives you narcolepsy. I love the, the counters. Uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, they're called the side effects that you get from some of the ingredients so it's kind of funny uh, spring whiff we're gonna do charm and scent we know what causes charm and scent so pop that in there we're gonna craft a potion and again there's three different ones there's potions creams and powders so right now we are doing potions and it just happens to be the ones that I click on I don't care to me the first time this happened and it brought up a different uh, station I thought why is it giving me different stations because I didn't understand that there's creams potions and powders and each one is different and so I don't know or care which one it is and please don't put too much green this time all right we did better this time on this potion this is spring with potion cures body odor and no side effects look at that a four star that's awesome it sells for more so we're do I'm doing so good. I'm like, let's keep going. <laughs> I shouldn't have done this one because I already had a whole bunch on the shelf. But that's okay. I know what ingredients it takes. I can do it so quickly. Again, while you are making these potions, creams, and powders, time is passing. So you kind of have to keep that in mind. Uh, time is passing. And it's another reason why I reduced the hours in my shop. So I had a better opportunity to be able to come in here. It's like, oh my goodness, come on. I had a better opportunity to come in here and make something without having those narrow hours at nighttime that was hard to hit. I have more time now uh, because I reduced the hours. And eventually, you know, maybe I'll be able to stop doing that, um, re, you know, expand the hours, and we'll see how it goes. Right now we're doing okay, except our employees are not happy. Not sure why, but we're going to keep working on them. And let's see. Okay. Uh, has, <laughs> this makes them people cowardly. So I don't know if that affects things in a bad way or not. I honestly don't know. Um, I haven't read too much about it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this burnout, um, which I believe is a cream. It needs growth and healing. And so I know that the uh, these ingredients that I'm putting in here right now have those things. Now here, this is one you have not seen before. So what you do is your ingredients are on the left. You turn on the burner and it's going to uh, cook them down into a runny concoction that you're going to put in the pan. 
you want to be less than half and then move it over to the right where you're going to put wax. You turn on the burner and you make wax and you want to keep your, your stir, stir, stir. Now it's saying it's good. Now it's saying it's perfect. And it went back down to good because it put too much wax in it. So I actually had didn't get that off of the burner in time. However, I got a four star burnout uh, with, uh, let's see, that is a... Uh, a cream. I was like, whoa, we're getting so good here. <laughs> Abdomen, I don't think we had any on the shelf. And all we need is anti-sick and healing. And we've got those ingredients for that. Uh, so we'll find it here. Blood few. Again, those are things that we've kind of gotten picked up on our own. So again, 100% profit is a good thing. So uh, just sweep that, chop that up, sweep it off into there. And then we use our mortar and pestle. Again, you, you click your mouse to make it go down, and then you just kind of go back and forth. When you don't see any more of the uh, dust up, coming up or bubbly stuff, then you stop and hit it, hit your mouse again. And there we are with our abdomen. Abdomen cures food poisoning. And we do sell quite a bit of that, so two star. That's a very good thing. And let's see, it's 2 a.m. Let's check our shelf. How does it look? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's getting very late and maybe it's time for us to go home and we are in Kennewich Village oh the burial ground yeah I really 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 wanted to uh, go down there and get some grave lilac but um, I did find out that it's the wrong season it's only got certain seasons that you can get it and I actually had wasted some time going down there so instead Let's head on towards home. It's uh, 4 a.m. and we are at Northgate and that is actually shorter to get home, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know if Northgate or Druid, uh, Druida's Cross is faster. Don't know which one. Don't really care. I just know that it's time for us to go home and at least get a tiny bit of sleep. If our uh, wonderful little digger doesn't come up with a place for us to go dig again. <laughs> He seems to find a lot of stuff to dig up, but it's awesome. It's money. Oh, let's see. A missing person letter to whom it may concern. None of us has seen our little Rowan for the past few days. She has gone picking wildflowers at the edge of Simplewood, and we were camped there passing through. Oh, no. So I got a little girl missing in Simplewood, which is awful. We didn't even have a sign on that. Okay, so we have a new task that we don't have a have an option of not accepting, which is go to Simplewood, which we will do next episode. Thank you for watching. If you haven't done so, please hit that subscribe button. And I, if you like my videos, hit a like. It likes you to like me better. But the most important thing is I want you to have a wonderful rest of your day.